Less than 11.2 degrees and fractional parts of a circle. A degree is a unit that is used to measure angles and temperature. Degrees are related to fractional parts of a circle because 1 360th of a circle is equal to 1 degree. There are 360 degrees in a circle. The symbol we use for degrees is a tiny circle to the upper right side, such as this. So that's 18 degrees. And we use a symbol for both angle measures and temperature. So this would be an 18 degree angle, but it could be 18 degrees outside. 1 360th is equal to 1 degree. 10 360ths is equal to 10 degrees. And two rays form the angle. We have a ray here and a ray here. And they meet at the center point of the circle. So that would be the vertex of the angle, wouldn't it? So in this angle, there are 10 degrees. We could split this angle into 10 tiny parts, and each part would be 1 degree. And do you notice? that for 10 360ths, it's 10 degrees. It's 10 parts of the 360 degrees of a circle. Here we have a 30 degree angle. This measures 30 degrees. We have 10, 20, 30. And going all the way around, I know my numbers are very tiny, it goes to 360. So let's take a closer look. We can see all the degrees going around the edge of this circle. And this is a 30 degree angle. It's 30 out of 360 degrees. It's 30 360ths. And an angle appears to increase in degrees as the rays get longer because this gets farther apart. Each ray becomes farther apart from each other but it doesn't. This is 30 degrees, this is 30 degrees, that's 30 degrees, that's 30 degrees. Doesn't matter how long the rays are, these are all, all the space in between here is 30 degrees. It's a 30 degree angle. A 30 degree angle is 30 of 360 degrees in a circle. We can simplify the fraction 30 360ths by dividing it by common factors for the 30 and the 360, 30 can go into both 30 and 360. We could do 30 divided by 30, which is a 1, and 360 divided by 30, which is a 12. That means this is 1 12th of a circle. And if that confused you, there's a link to Simplifying Fractions, video 6.3 in the description. So we can take a little tiny circle with a 30 degree angle. We can put it right on here and see. It doesn't matter how small the circle is. 30 degrees is 30 degrees. Since 30 degrees is equal to 30 360ths, which we just found was equal to 1 12th, we can relate each number on an analog clock from 1 to 12 as a group of 30 degrees. Here, the minute hand is pointing to the 1. That would be 1 times 30. That would be a 30 degree angle. If it's pointing to the 2, we have two 30 degree angles together. That's 60 degrees. When it's pointing to the 3, we have 30, 30, 30. That's 3 times 30 degrees. That's 90 degrees. When it, the minute hand's pointing to the 6, that is 6 times 30. That's 180 degrees. And when the minute hand's pointing to the 9, that's 9 times 30. That's 270 degrees. There are four 90 degree angles in a circle. And if we add 90 plus 90 plus 90 plus 90, or do 4 times 90, it's equal to 360 degrees. And a right angle measures 90 degrees. A right angle is 1 fourth of a circle. It's one of four parts of the circle. 
we can write an equivalent fraction, 1 fourth. We multiply the numerator and denominator by the same amount. 1 fourth, we do 1 times 90, that's 90, and 4 times 90, that's 360. We can see that 1 fourth is equal to 90 360ths. That means the numerator is the degrees, it's 90 degrees. A straight angle is made of two rays that continue in opposite directions. So starting in the center point, we have one going up and we have one going down, and they make a line. And there are two 180 degree angles in a circle. 180 plus 180 is 360, so there are two 180 degree angles in a circle. And a straight angle measures 180 degrees. And a straight angle is half of a circle. And it doesn't matter which way the rays are pointing, that's still half of a circle. That's still half of a circle. It's 180 of 360 degrees in a circle. Half, one half, if we multiply the 1 times 180 and the 2 times 180, both the numerator and denominator multiplied by the same amount, we get 180 three sixtieths, and the 180 is the degrees. The numerator is the degrees when it's written over 360. In video 10.1, which is linked in the, into the description, we learned about right angles, straight angles, acute angles, and obtuse angles. And since a right angle measures 90 degrees, and an acute angle is less than a right angle, an acute angle must be less than 90 degrees. An obtuse angle is greater than a right angle, so it must be greater than 90 degrees. An acute angle is greater than 0 degrees and less than 90 degrees. A right angle is exactly 90 degrees. It's only 90 degrees. An obtuse angle is greater than this 90 degree angle, and it's less than 180 degrees. And a straight angle is exactly 180 degrees. It's only 180 degrees. And when you get into middle school, you're going to learn about reflex angles. They're greater than 180 degrees. They're open more than this. They open so much that they come around like that, and they're less than the 360 degrees of a circle. We can find the measure of an angle that turns through a fraction of a circle by using equivalent fractions. We learned how to make equivalent fractions in video 6.2. So turning through one-sixth of a circle, we write one-sixth, we need to write an equivalent fraction, and we think, well, the only information we have is six times some number is equal to 360. So we work with the denominator, and we can look at six times 36. If we ignore this zero, well, 6 times 6 is 36. So if this is 360, it must be 6 times 60 is equal to 360. When there's a 0 on the end, we can think of a basic fact, like 6 times some number is 36. And we know if we multiply the denominator by 60, the numerator is also going to want to be multiplied by 60. That means 1 sixth of a circle is 60 360ths. And we use the numerator when for a fraction of a circle with 360 as a denominator, the numerator will be the degrees of the angle. So when we're looking at a fraction of a circle and we're given 360 as a denominator, whatever that numerator is will be the degrees of the angle for that fractional part of the circle. So that would be 60 degrees. Here we have turning through one-fifth of a circle. We write one-fifth. We need to multiply the numerator and denominator by the same amount. We need to find some number that five times something is equal 
to 360, we might have to use an inverse operation like division to figure this out and think 360 divided by 5 to help us find this missing factor. We think 5 fits into 360 how many times? It doesn't fit into 3, so we need to fit it into the 36. And 5 times 7 is 35. We subtract the 35, and we drop down the 1 here. 6 minus 5 is a 1. That would be a 0, so we don't write anything. And we drop down the next digit, the 0, and think 5 fits into 10 how many times? 2. And we get a zero remainder, and we see it fits into 360 72 times. That means 5 times 72 is equal to 360. The numerator wants to be multiplied by 72. That means 1 fifth is equal to 72 360 ths. It's equal to 72 degrees. We need to write acute, right, obtuse, or straight to classify each angle by its given degrees. If we had an angle that was 95 degrees, what kind of angle would it be? Do you remember our little chart of what they had to be greater than or less than or exactly? Well, we know a right angle is 90 degrees, so we can put right angle for this one right away. And do you remember what angle is 180 degrees? If you said straight angle, you're correct. So what angle would be 95 degrees more than a right angle? If you said obtuse, you're correct. And what angle would be 17 degrees? That's not very large, is it? It's not very great. If you said acute angle, you're correct. So we can classify an angle by its given degrees. So any angle from 0 to 90, but not 90, because that would be a right angle, 0 up to 90 would be acute, 90 would be right. If it was greater than 90, but less than 180 degrees, it's obtuse and a straight angle is exactly 180 degrees. Let's try some higher order thinking skills. Mrs. Kim cut a pie into six equal slices, and she removed two slices. What is the measure of the angle made by the missing slices of pie? So we think we need to find the angle made from the missing pieces, where the pie pan is empty, and we can draw a quick picture. We can make a circle and put it into six equal parts. Eh, my drawing's not perfect. It was a quick picture. Two of the pieces of pie were taken away. So this is the missing part of the pie. This is the angle we're looking for. The missing pieces, not the rest of the pie. And we think we put it into six equal pieces. So one piece would be one of six. That's one sixth. And we can write an equivalent fraction with 360 de degrees for the circle as our denominator. And we think 6 times some number is equal to 360. Well, that would be 6 times 60. The numerator needs to be multiplied by 60 also. And we get 60 360 ths But we're not finished because that's only one slice of pi as one-sixth. We need two of them, so we can add 60, because we know the numerator is going to be the degrees over the 360. We can add 60 for one slice and 60 for another slice, and we find the measure of the angle made by the missing slices of pi is 120 degrees. Tala started her math homework at 2.45 p.m. and finished at 3.15 p.m. During this time, what fraction of a circle did the minute hand turn? And how many degrees did the minute hand turn? So we think we need to answer two questions. There's two question marks here. 
what fraction of the circle the minute hand turned and how many degrees did it turn. We can draw a quick picture. If it's 245, the minute hand is pointing to the 9. And then she finished at 315, so now the minute hand is pointing to the 3. So after 15 minutes, when the minute hand was here, it went up to the 12, didn't it? So that's 3 o'clock. Then it continued on to 315. This is the minute hand, okay? So that means 15 minutes to go to 3 o'clock and another 15 minutes for the minute hand to be at, at pointing to the 3 for the 15. This means from 245 to 315, 15 plus 15 is 30. That's 30 minutes elapsed. And 30 minutes is half of 60 minutes. And the minute hand goes around one complete time for an hour. That's 60 minutes. So we know it went around halfway. It went from here to here. That means the minute hand made a half turn clockwise. So you could even draw more than one quick picture. You could draw a quick picture showing the time at 2.45. You can make another picture showing it at 3 o'clock and another picture showing it at 3.15. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just a quick picture to help you on scratch paper. And we learned in video 11.1, the last video, about angles and fractional parts of a clock. And that's linked into the description also. And the second question asks, how many degrees did the minute hand turn? So we think the minute hand made a half turn clockwise. We write a half with 360 as the denominator. Two times some number is equal to 360. That would be 180. We need to multiply the numerator by the same amount, so we have 180 360ths, and that means, because the numerator is 180 over this 360 degrees of a circle, it's equal to 180 degrees. That's how many degrees the minute hand turned. So remember when you're doing degrees of a circle, you can imagine a clock, and that might help you. In our next lesson, 11.3, we're going to measure and draw angles with a protractor. This is what a protractor looks like. So we're going to use one of these to help us measure and draw angles. So if you have one of those, make sure you have it for the next lesson. I hope I'll see you there. Bye.